Congressman, I have been following on the protest and I saw your statement also on the protest while the protests are calmer today in DC comparing to other days. Um, you reacted to this email removing National Guard and also you tweeted about it. Um, do you think the presence of National Guard was necessary? Uh, well, no, I think I think it's necessary to have the National Guard and especially when you have looting and, and you know throwing bricks through store windows and stealing things you know we are all about peaceful protests i think protests are important right having your voice heard but nobody has a right to destroy property no matter how angry you are and uh and the police department you know it's it's built for basically policing 365 days a year they don't build the police department for times when there's rioting. So the National Guard was the right thing to do. And fr frankly, in places where we saw the National Guard, we saw peaceful protests because they protected stores and, and people's homes. Many protests started and remained peaceful. And in many places, in many cities, it turned into violence. Why do you think it turned out that way? You know, it, it, sometimes it happens. People let the best, uh, you know, they let their emotions get a hold of them or bad groups. Uh, embed themselves within, you know, peaceful protests. We see that all over, especially in Afghanistan and the Middle East, where bad actors can embed themselves to try to create a broader conflict. So, you know, the first few days, it got a little out of hand and places were burned down. But uh, I think we're in a position now where we don't have to worry as much about that. Uh, the protests are peaceful and, uh, and we're going to move on and hopefully, you know, make some changes, get some changes to what we need to do. But that no right, nobody has any right uh, to take somebody's life or to take their property from them. These protests, Black Lives Matter, and also some other racial movement, racial issues, which is uh, all inclusive and huge, and also it uh, has expanded beyond U.S. and other countries. Do you think this will impact the upcoming U.S. presidential election results and presidential It'll election? Be I, it potentially could. Um, I mean, I think there'll be certainly an impact if the election were held today. But as we've seen, every month there's some new big issue. I mean, just last month it was coronavirus, then it was the economy, now it's this. So in democracy, these things change every moment. I think it will have an impact. Um, I don't necessarily know in what way. I think if the protests happen again and get violent, I think it actually benefits President Trump. Uh, but I do think there's people that recognize that there are bad actors within the police department, but that doesn't mean that police are bad. Uh, the vast majority of police in the United States are good people that just want to protect their community. And, uh, and we see some bad apples. We have to take care of those without doing silly things like defunding the police department. Great. So let's move to the topic of our interest, Afghanistan. Um, I'm sure you followed up on the, uh, the news on peace talks between U.S. and Taliban and also Ambassador Khalizad actually today. He's in Islamabad and talking to folks there also on peace talks. And how do you assess so far the peace talks and the process? Are we in the right path? I mean, U.S. is in the right path to the talks with the Taliban? Well, I think, you know, we're on the right path in terms of talks. I think the Afghan government needs to be really the driving force in talks. Uh, we can help to facilitate them because this affects Afghanistan far more than it affects the United States. Um, you know, I think the Taliban have not appeared too eager to keep up to some of the ceasefire agreements. And we saw with the first uh, strike of U.S. forces against Taliban just a few days ago. Um, so the bottom line is I'd love to see peace in Afghanistan. I think everybody would, but it has to be under the right conditions. I think, you know, understanding that if the Taliban want to compete on the political scene, they can do that. But there's going to be no more violence. And the United States is not going to leave under a condition of threat. Because the bottom line is we don't get defeated in Afghanistan. I mean, we've never been defeated there and we never will be, uh, but we would like to see peace as I think everybody would. So I think we're on the right maybe path. The key is just not to accept something that frankly is just unacceptable. I spoke to retired Army General Petraeus on uh, the same topic, and he said that Taliban are maybe in touch with the militant groups, but they're not representing militant groups and he cannot tell them what to do. So uh, also there are other military groups. So do you think it is going to work and Taliban will cooperate and they will stop violence and it's going to work? No. I mean, I have no reason to trust the Taliban. Um, I think the only way it would work is if they recognize that they don't have a choice. Uh, and if the United States and our partners, our NATO partners, 
uh, and the Afghan government put together a very strong enforcement mechanism to compel them to go by it, you know. But it's one thing if you're the Taliban to say you won't let extremist groups within your controlled area, but then the question is, what is your controlled area? You know, can you project power outside of a city you may have troops? And, uh, and that's what I don't think that they can do. And I ultimately think someday if the U.S. leaves, the Taliban will once again openly harbor enemies of the United States. So uh, I'm not happy with where we're at. I think uh, there is nothing wrong with trying to get somewhere, but I think we shouldn't get our hopes up. And quite honestly, I think the president will not uh, abandon Afghanistan until until we get a position where we can leave under uh, conditions of, of peace. And Afghan leaders recently agreed on power sharing, which is perhaps helps the prospect of inter-Afghan talks with the Taliban. And as you say, the Taliban, uh, they still choose violence over peace. So do you think it still is going to work? Because I think president wants Afghans to decide for themselves. He does, and uh, and I certainly think it's a good move. Uh, there, I mean, it's the only move at this point, you know. And he, this, you have to think of it through the eyes of an American, where it's like, you know, we fight for 19 years to bring democracy to Afghanistan, and then ultimately, the people of Afghanistan can't agree on even basic things, and that's what's got to change, you know. And I try to say that to the extent sometimes out in the United States when politics breaks down is like, guys. You know, yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but it's sure better than the alternative. For the Afghan people, it's sure better than lawlessness or being under the control of the Taliban. You may not like the leader that's part of the power sharing that doesn't represent your viewpoint, but trust me, it's far better than being worried if your daughter is going to be able to live or get an education. And so being able to get past that, I want everything just for the purpose of living is a great, great position where we're at. And I hope this is, you know, an important step to getting a free and an independent Afghanistan uh, with, that is a strong U.S. partner. Yeah. And also part of these peace talks uh, is the uh, withdrawal of U.S. troops. And Mark Esper, like, uh, recently said that it's going to happen just before, right before election. Do you think it's the right time to withdraw U.S. troops while other militant groups like ISIS cross? And you remember the attacks on the military paternity war. While these groups still exist in Afghanistan, is it the right time to um, withdraw the troops from Afghanistan? No, I actually think it's the right time for more troops in Afghanistan, but I understand that I'm not going to get my way on that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've heard uh, from this administration a number of times that they were pulling troops, whether it's Afghanistan or from Iraq or from Syria or from Germany or from South Korea. It's kind of what they do, and uh, they just talk about it and then ultimately make the right decision. So. I'm not convinced. There may be a slight decrease in American presence there, uh, but I would be very surprised if America just turned around and left Afghanistan. I think we're making some good progress. It's not easy. And the problem is we have to understand that, you know, anywhere the United States has been engaged in militarily, we still have some version of troops there. And uh, it'll be the case in Afghanistan. But the Afghan people uh, don't oppose us, unlike they oppose the Soviet intervention. The Afghan people are supportive of the United States, so it's not an occupation, it's a partnership. And I think that's an important message to get out to the American people. Sounds good. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Of course. Good Thank seeing you. Thank you so much.